James here from Sweet Pea Machine Embroidery. This is a video tutorial for the new bookshelf quilt sew along. We are really excited about our new design and hope you enjoy making it. Join the bookshelf quilt group on Facebook for the competition details and receive a 30% discount on the design. Find the link in the description below. The quilt includes eight fantastic blocks featuring books, plants and journals. The design can be made in the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 and the 7x7 hoops. In this video we show you the stitch out of the vase block and the construction of the quilt. We recommend you follow our written, photographed instructions in conjunction with this video tutorial. If you enjoy this tutorial, please like and subscribe. Begin by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Then place batting 1 on top of the hoop and stitch down. When laying down the batting, we use the pink thing to keep it lying flat so it doesn't bunch up under the needle. Once stitched down, remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching using your applique scissors. Stitch the placement line for the background. Next, place fabric A right side up on top of the hoop covering the placement line and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Leave the fabric in the seams. Now stitch the placement line for the books. Use the diagram as a reference for the following steps. Place one piece of fabric C on top of the placement line for book 1 and stitch down. Then trim. Repeat the stitch down process for books 2 with another piece of fabric C. Then trim. Once both are stitched down, embroider the satin stitch around book 1. Embroider the satin stitch and decorative stitch around book 2. Now embroider the stems. Embroider the purple flowers. Embroider the pink flowers. Stitch the placement line for the vase. Place mylar on top of the placement line and stitch down the mylar. Embroider the stippling and outline of the vase. If you use mylar, trim it now. Using the bottom trimmed edge of fabric A as a placement line, place fabric B on top of the hoop wrong side up, crossing the placement line by a quarter of an inch with excess fabric towards the top of the hoop and stitch down. Fold back fabric B back towards the bottom of the hoop, hold taut and stitch down. Embroider the stippling on the shelf. Stitch the placement line for book 3. 
Place the remaining piece of fabric C on top of the placement line and stitch down. Then trim. Embroider the satin stitch and decorative stitch around book 3. Embroider the word crochet on book 2. You have now completed the stitch out of the vase block. Remove your work from the hoop and trim the seam to about half an inch using your rotary cutter and ruler. Here you have the completed block. Hold aside and follow the instructions for the remaining blocks you want to make. Great work everyone! I will now show you how to construct the bookshelf quilt. First lay out your quilt in the order you would like. Ours is just an example. Start off by joining the blocks in rows. Place the first two blocks right sides together. And pin along one edge lining up the border stitching the best you can. Take your time with this process. Take the pin blocks over to your sewing machine and sew a half inch seam, sewing just inside the border lines already on the panels. Open the seams and iron them flat. Continue this until you have joined the remaining blocks in that row together. Continue this until you have each horizontal row of blocks joined. Next, join the horizontal rows to each other by placing the first two rows right sides together. Pin and stitch the seams on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks, so the stitching will not be seen on the right sides later. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Continue this until you have joined all the horizontal rows together. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Trim all the edges so they are straight. Perfect, let's move on to the borders. To work out the length measurements for the side borders, start by adding the two widths of the inside and outer borders together. Now multiply this number by two. To work out your final length measurement, measure along one side the longer edge of the join blocks and add this measurement to the new number. This is the length you should cut your side borders. Repeat the same method as above. The widths of the borders are the same as the sides. To work out your final length measurement, measure along one edge of the join blocks and add this measurement to the new number. Attach the inside borders to their matching outer border. Do this by placing the inside and outside borders right sides together. Pin and stitch together along one of the long edges with a quarter inch seam.
fold over and iron the seam open. Repeat this process for the remaining borders. We didn't use batting in our borders as we chose a thicker fabric. Fold one of the side borders right sides together, short edge to short edge. Mark the file with a pin on the inside border edge. And unfold. Place the quilt on top of the side border and have them right sides together. Make sure the raw edge of the quilt is matching up with the raw edge of the inside border strip. Also, match up the center pins together. Pin along that edge. We now need to stitch them together. The trick with stitching the borders on is that you don't want to sew the seams as this can later create pleats in the fabric or the mitered border just won't turn out right. To begin, sink your needle right into the corner stitching, but still in between those two stitching lines and begin stitching. Finish the stitching in the opposite corner and remember, do not stitch into the seam. Fold over and iron the side border down neatly. Repeat the same process for the second side border. Now for attaching the two end borders. Fold one of the short end borders right sides together, short edge to short edge. Mark the fold with the pin on the inside border edge and then unfold. You do not need to fold the quilt in half to find the center, as you can just use the seam in between the two blocks as the center point. Place your quilt right side up on your work surface. Fold the excess fabric from the side borders up against the stitching and out of the way. Pin them in place so they don't move back. When folded back, you will notice that the stitching doesn't go into the seams. Place the quilt on top of the end border. Have them right sides together and make sure, make sure the raw edge of the quilt is matching up with the raw edge of the inside border strip. Also match up the center pins together that we marked earlier. Pin together. Stitch together. Again, make sure that we do not stitch into the seams on the block. Sink your needle right into the corner stitching but still in between those two stitching lines. You can sink the needle down right at the end of the side border stitching so they meet up. Unpin the excess fabric from the side borders. Repeat the same process for the second end border. Iron all of the excess from the inside borders so they are nice and even. Let's create the mitered corners now. Have your quilt right side facing up on your work surface. Fold an end border on top of the side border right sides together. Try and match up the borders perfectly. Pin these two borders together. This will keep them in place and from moving while stitching. Make sure you have the little corner seam from the blocks flipped open and flat. With a ruler against the folded edge, mark a line for the corner point of stitching and across the border fabric and batting. If you have a striped border, place some pins along this marked line for matching up the stripe when stitching. The stitching of a mitered corner sometimes requires a couple of attempts to get it absolutely correct and sitting flat. Stitch from the corner point of stitching right along the marked line and finish the stitching on the outer edges of the borders. Unfold the quilt and check to see that the mitered corner has worked. If you use batting, fold over again and trim the excess batting from the ends of the borders. Trim back the seam allowance to a quarter inch and iron open the seam. 
Repeat the same process for the remaining three corners. Trim the edges of the quilt to ensure they are all even and the same width. To add the backing, place your backing fabric wrong side up on top of your work surface. Then place the quilt you have just made right side up on top of the backing fabric, wrong sides together. You can lightly spray your backing down to your quilt to help the border stay in place while attaching the binding. Alternatively, you can base stitch the backing to the borders after completing your stitch in the ditch. Or place safety pins approximately 4 inches apart across the whole front of the quilt, going through all layers. This will keep all layers together while you stitch in the ditch. Stitch in the ditch along some of the longer seams. There is no right or wrong way of selecting these seams. We stitched using an invisible monofilament thread in the needle and a bobbin thread that matched the backing fabric. We do not suggest using invisible thread on both sides, as it tends to unravel over time. Trim the edges of the quilt to ensure they are all even and the same width. Use your own preferred way of adding the binding to the outer edges of your quilt or follow our method of making a binding. To make the binding, measure the length and width of the quilt and add them together and then multiply it by two. Cut a long strip of fabric this length. If you're cutting one piece of fabric this length, add about an extra 12 to 16 inches, or 30 to 40 centimeters to the length, just to be sure you have enough fabric in the end. Or cut a few strips and join them together with your sewing machine as shown. Add extra length if you are joining strips, about 10 centimeters or four inches per strip. The width is optional, but we usually find three inches or eight centimeters wide enough. Lay the ends of your fabric strips right sides together at a right angle. Pin the two pieces of fabric together, keeping the edges matching. Draw a 45 degree angle with a fabric marker. Then sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner. Cut the corner a quarter of an inch from the stitch down. Now iron open the seam and repeat until all the binding strips are sewn together into one long strip. Then fold the whole strip in half wrong sides together and iron down. Lay out your binding fabric and unfold one end. Fold that open end of the binding to a 45 degree angle as shown and lightly press. Trim your fabric a quarter of an inch from the 45 degree angle fold. Fold the binding strip in half again. Match the raw edges of the quilt and the binding to the desired starting location, with your quilt right side up. Start about halfway along one side, 
Using a ruler, mark one inch down from the end of the strip. Mark with a pin. Using a ruler, mark three inches down from the one inch mark. Mark with a second pin. At this time, we also marked a two inch gap above from the first pin. This pin will signal when to stop stitching. Using a 3 8 of an inch seam, stitch one inch of the open fold onto the wall hanging and stop stitching when you get to the one inch mark. Then leave a three inch gap. This will provide an opening to insert the end of the binding fabric when we have completed the sewing. Then start stitching again at the three inch mark. Continue sewing until you reach the first corner and stop stitching 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter from the end, but keep your needle down. Lift your foot and turn your quilt with your needle still down. Continue stitching to the corner. Lift the binding strip over and pull against that angled stitch that we just made to form a diagonal fold. Then fold the binding strip back down, creating a fold at the top. Pin and start stitching again until you reach the side of the quilt you started on, mitering the corners as you go. Stop stitching when you get to the pin that marks the two inches from the starting point. Fold up the remaining binding so it sits just above the three inch mark. Trim the excess binding, leaving enough to slip into the fold. Trim a one eighth of an inch off the raw edge of the binding for a good one inch. Place the end of the binding fabric into the pocket created at the start of the binding process. Pin in place. Continue to stitch the seam until binding is completely sewn on. Fold back the binding and iron the seams flat. Now turn the quilt over so you're working on the back of the quilt. We started at the corners of the quilt. Fold in one side of the corner just past the stitching and iron well. This will help get a nice pointed corner. Repeat for the other side of the corner meeting up the first fold creating a nice pointed corner. Pin in place. Repeat for all four corners of the wall hanging. Start stitching anywhere on the quilt from the front using the stitch in the ditch method. When you get to the corner, simply just leave your needle down and lift the foot and rotate the wall hanging. Put your foot down and continue stitching in this fashion until you are right around the wall hanging. Give it a good press with your iron.
Thanks for watching our video tutorial on the bookshelf quilt. I hope you had fun making this design and I look forward to seeing everyone's wonderful photo entries on the Facebook group. Well that's all from us. Happy sewing.